All right, hello everybody. Today my presentation will be on the topic of brakes. What are brakes? Well, I mean, if you've ever driven a car before, you obviously know what brakes are. Brakes are the stopping force. They provide the ability to bring the aircraft to a stop. Uh, brake, the brake system is a system of parts that utilize hydraulic pressure and friction to stop each individual wheel. Uh, each brake system is attached to each main gear and in some aircraft, you can provide di differential braking pressure, uh, which can assist to turn the taxi or turn the airplane during a taxi situation. All right, so everything that's involved in the braking system includes the disc, uh, which is the uh, grip surface that uh, the brake pads grip onto to provide the friction stopping force. Uh, the actuators are levers or a rudder and tow brake pedal, uh, depending on the aircraft. Uh, then there's a parking brake. Uh, then there's a fluid reservoir that contains all of the fluid, all the brake fluid, and distributes it to where it needs to go. Uh, there's a master cylinder on each uh, pedal for, uh, to provide the braking pressure, because that's what forces the, the fluid through. Uh, then brake lines carry the brake fluid from the reservoir through the master cylinders all the way out to the brake assemblies. Uh, the brake housing or the brake assembly is what contains the uh, calipers or the, excuse me, the, uh, the brake linings or the brake pads. Uh, and then obviously brake fluid. All right, so since most general aviation aircraft use a single disc system, I'm gonna be focusing on a single disc uh, system. Uh, a single disc braking system consists of two friction producing calipers, uh, one per wheel, so there's one caliper per wheel. Uh, these calipers clamp down onto the rotating disc on each wheel using brake linings, otherwise known as brake pads, uh, and hydraulic pressure. Uh, and these calipers are activated by the pilot in the cockpit using a rudder or a tow pedal, or alternatively, uh, a lever. So here's a diagram of a normal braking system in an aircraft. So uh, fluid would be contained in the reservoir. The reservoir is not displayed here. Uh, and then it will be distributed to each master cylinder. Uh, this is a two uh, brake system. So uh, the pilot and the co-pilot can both activate the brakes on this system. Uh, the, master the master cylinder is pushed by the brake pedal and then that force gets applied to through the brake line all the way down to the brake caliper and then the brake caliper clamps onto the brake discs on each wheel. Uh, in the middle here is a parking brake valve uh, and then there's a parking brake lever in the cockpit. Uh, when you activate the parking brake it activates the it uh, provides pressure to the brake caliper so that it keeps those uh, brake linings clamped down on the brake disc, which enables the aircraft to stay stationary when it's parked. All right, so uh, as I said earlier, there's a lever operated brake system, which is you know, more basic, but uh, a lot of aircraft use the rudder slash tow pedal assembly. Uh, it's an assembly that's attached to each rudder pedal so it consists of the pedal itself, obviously, a master cylinder that get that is attached to the pedal, and then a brake line that comes out of the master cylinder. And then inside the master cylinder, there's a moving piston that uh, when you push down on the pedal, on the top of the pedal, it'll push that piston, which provides that braking pressure, pushes that hydraulic fluid through the system. Uh, and then pressurizes the calipers, which clamp down onto the brake discs. All right, so the parking brake obviously is used to hold the brakes on to keep the plane stationary when parked. Uh, in the cockpit, there's a ratcheting lever, or sometimes there's an electronically actuated button that uh, pressurizes the fluid uh, when you are stopped to clamp the brakes at the assemblies. So it clamps down onto those discs and then keeps the wheel stationary and keeps the airplane stationary. All right, so here's how to use the brakes. So 
as I said before, they can either be activated using the lever or the rudder pedal assembly, depending on what type of aircraft. Uh, for the hand-operated lever, you just pull the lever to apply the braking force. Uh, usually it's only one lever, so when you pull the lever, it applies bo both uh, sides evenly. And the harder you pull the lever, the harder the brakes activate, obviously. Uh, for the rudder pedal assembly, uh, with the rudder pedal, uh, you push down on the top of the rudder pedal with your toe, basically. Uh, and obviously, uh, the left pedal would be the left brake. Uh, so the left pedal runs down to the left side brake, and then the right pedal runs down to the right side brake. And then this enables something called differential pressure. Uh, and you can use less braking pressure. Let's say if you want to make a right turn, you can use uh, less braking pressure on the right side. So you lift up on the rudder pedal on the right side and then apply more, or no, excuse me. If you're making a right turn, you can uh, apply more braking pressure to the right side and less braking pressure on the left side. And this can kind of help you turn the aircraft more tightly during a taxi. All right, the master cylinder. Uh, this is what provides the transfer of your foot pressure when you push down on the rudder pedal or when you pull the lever to into hydraulic pressure that gets forced through the brake lines to activate each brake assembly. Uh, it'll contain brake fluid and a piston, basically. And when you push the, the brake pedal or activate the lever, the piston forces the hydraulic fluid inside the master cylinder to pressurize and then this gets forced through the brake lines and uh, all the way down onto the calipers, the brake assemblies, and it applies braking pressure from the linings inside the calipers to the rotating discs, which obviously slows down the aircraft. Uh, brake lines are obviously the lines that route from the brake pedal master cylinder to each brake assembly. Uh, they carry the brake fluid. Uh, you can see here that uh, I couldn't find a really good picture of brake lines, but this is a good, I mean, it's a, it's a line, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the brake fluid is pressurized from the master cylinder, pushed through the lines, and then it activates all the brake assemblies, depending on which one you activate. So when the uh, caliper is pressurized, it forces those brake linings against the disc, and it kind of clamps onto the disc all right, so the brake disc is a rotating steel circular disc that's attached rigidly to each wheel. So as the wheel turns, the disc turns the same amount inside the brake assembly. Uh, this is the surface that uh, uh, the brake uh, linings grip onto, and this provides the friction force that slows down the aircraft. Uh, Discs can be either made out of traditional steel or chrome steel. So what's the difference between traditional uh, and chrome discs? So traditional discs are just normal steel, uh, like normal brake discs. Uh, you know, by nature, they're susceptible to corrosion and rust from elements. So let's say your airplane is sitting outside, it's raining, they're susceptible, they're susceptible, 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 Oh my gosh, I came. They're able to be rusted. Uh, chrome discs are designed to protect against corrosion and rust because the chrome plating, the way the discs are made, are more resistant to corrosion and rust, which enables them to have a significantly, uh, significantly longer lifespan. And then, obviously, lower maintenance costs over time because you're not having to replace the brake discs all the time. Uh, Chrome discs can be installed as replacement upgrades over traditional discs. So let's say your airplane came with traditional discs or you have traditional discs installed in your airplane. Manufacturers usually make chrome versions, uh, chrome versions of these discs. So you can get that upgrade. Uh, chrome discs are recommended if the airplane sits for long periods of time because as the airplane sits, it builds up corrosion and rust. So the longer the airplane sits, you know, with traditional discs, this might ruin the discs, but with chrome discs, you uh, are more resistant to that uh, corrosion. All right, so the brake housing or the brake caliper is an assembly attached to the strut of each landing gear. Uh, 
this is what provides the clamping pressure for the brake linings, uh, which are located inside the housing. So when I say brake linings, I mean brake pads. Oops, excuse me. Uh, so you can see here that this is the disc right here. Actually, this is a better one. The disc is right here in the middle. This moves with the wheel. When you apply brakes, uh, the brake pads clamp onto the disc, and then that friction creates a braking force. Uh, each uh, caliper mainly consists of the caliper housing itself, a brake line that goes into the caliper, and then a piston that uh, forces that uh, those linings to clamp together. There's one lining that's stationary on the one side, and then the other side is the one that gets pushed by the piston. So as these get pushed together, uh, it creates an even amount of braking pressure on both sides of the disc. All right, um, brake fluid is the hydraulic fluid that's used to transmit pressure from the master cylinder to the piston on the brake assembly. Uh, it's carried through brake lines, obviously. It also provides the purpose of lubricating all the moving parts that it comes in contact with. And it also provides cooling for all the braking components because brakes obviously from friction get hot. So brake fluid is able to carry that heat away from the parts of the brake system. All right, uh, there's different types of brake fluid uh, that are available in aircraft applications, but most aircraft will be based on a uh, 5606 brake fluid. Uh, this is a hydraulic fluid that has lubricating properties and it's usually red in color, like you can see here. Uh, it's petroleum-based, so uh, due to its petroleum base, it's flammable. Uh, and then there's different variations of fluids that are available for aircraft uh, that have different properties. So they're compatible with different braking systems because if you use one type of brake fluid in a system that wasn't designed for that, brake fluid, then it might eat away at all the steels of the brake fluid and might cause damage. Uh, but most aviation uh, brake fluids are based on this 5606 uh, five, standard. All right, so specifically for the Piper Seminole, uh, it's based on the normal aircraft single disc braking system. Uh, it has the single disc assemblies located on each main gear, the left gear and the right main gear. Uh, they're actuated by tow brake pedals on both the, uh, the pilot and co-pilot pedals. So both pilot and co-pilot have uh, uh, access to using brakes. Uh, the brake fluid reservoir is located on the upper right side of the bulkhead. And this contains the brake fluid, obviously, and then distributes it to each master cylinder. And then the type of brake fluid that the Piper uses is uh, MIL PRF 5606, which is based on the, just the normal standard 5606 five, hydraulic fluid. All right, so my work cited, uh, I used uh, an article called Aircraft Brakes by Aircraft Systems, aircraftsystems.tech.com. Uh, I used another article called Aircraft Braking Systems by Aero, uh, Aero Toolbox, uh, aerotoolbox.com. I used an article called Brake Slash Hydraulic System by FlyJerry uh, at flyjerry.com. And then for some pictures, I went to Aircraft Spruce for example, like my, uh, uh, my brake disc pictures. I used uh, Cleveland Chrome Brake Disc 164117 at aircraftspruce.com. Uh, for most of my information, I used the uh, Aircraft Systems book written by David A. Lombardo. Uh, hydraulic fluid picture from aircraftspruce.com, uh, and then another hydraulic fluid, that was the Phillips 66 hydraulic fluid can uh, from aircraftspruce.com. And then I used another brake disc picture from aircraftspruce.com, uh, and then obviously another picture, I think this one was the chrome one uh, from aircraftspruce.com. And then finally, I used another article called Types and Construction of Aircraft Brakes Part 1 by Flight Mechanic at flightmechanic.com. And that'll be everything for brake systems. Uh, there are many more types of uh, brake systems available. 
but for most general aviation aircraft, you'll be finding uh, single disc systems. And since we be, will be flying the Piper Seminole, which uses a single disc system, I wanted to mainly focus on Piper Seminole or uh, single disc systems. And that'll be it. Thank you for watching.